stand and spin. Okay, can you come forward? Nina, up stand. Come forward. Good girl. And you sit. Okay, there we go. Good girl. Stay there. Okay. Have you ever tried to hide your disability? No. Uh, good luck to us with that. Yeah, no, that's um, not going to happen. <laughs> it, yeah, no, it doesn't work. No. So can you, do you, listen to music? Since I had my second implant, um, my world has just reopened to music. Spotify is just the best thing in the world. <laughs> If you woke up tomorrow without your disability, what would be the first thing you'd do? Oh, okay. I'd go to the movies. <laughs> Genuinely. Go for a run, I don't know, that sounds so cliche. Throw away all my medi medication. How did you choose your chair? Is it like shopping for a car? Yes, yes. absolutely. Totally. You can customise everything. You basically get to choose. It depends on how much money you have to spend, I guess, which is very similar to a car. I don't necessarily like turning up to lectures early or on time. I try to arrive late because I don't want to have to deal with the waiting, the, the agitation and anxiety associated with waiting for something to start. I tend to avoid going into coffee shops at peak times because of the number of people in there and the, and the number, amount of noise because the more noise the less I can hear and the less therefore I can see. New Year's Eve or Mardi Gras or anything where there's a parade going on and you have to kind of squeeze your way to the front and, uh, and people sort of pushing from behind. I guess yeah I like it when people sort of you know, kind of, oh, you might be hearing him head. I'll make sure that you can see me before I start talking and all of that sort of stuff. If I'm standing on a street corner looking really, really lost, come over and ask if I'm okay. That's, that's, that's really good, but some people just are not sure if they should do that or not. Has your disability impacted your relationships? Uh, yes, it, it has. Before being diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, uh, I had a relationship where uh, at one point my girlfriend came home from work with the, where she was helping an autistic child and said, you know what, I'm pretty sure you've got that. Up until then, um, she was a bit frustrated uh, with my uh, anxiety, uh, with my uh, way, uh, quirks and ways of communicating. I've been in a relationship now for just under two years and like it's never kind of been an issue like it was a case of like well this is who you are and this is you know our relationship and it's been great and it wasn't like ever uh, something that we needed to like address is like oh we can't possibly be in a relationship until we've talked this yeah, through. Do you prefer to hang out with people who also have a disability? I don't mind, it doesn't make a difference to me. I kind of like to see people with a disability, no matter what it is, being included. Prefer, no, but I'm not, not going to. But um, I don't instinctively find someone in a wheelchair and be like, let's hang out. I like hanging out with people that also have uh, similar problems to me because they understand uh, that they, what it's like to go through. Do you have a TV? Yes, a very big one, um, and it's still not big enough. What are the worst examples in media, TV, movies, etc., of betrayals with people with disabilities? I was, I was watching something the other day that had a character in it that's totally blind, and um, it's sort of like it was portraying that he were, it was a comedy, so I understand that you, you, you have to do these things, but it sends out a bit of a wrong message. He, he was finding that he wasn't, he was reading a braille book and it wasn't making any sense, and then the sighted person had to come to the rescue and blow off the sesame seeds. I'm going to say Artie from Glee. Oh yeah. I can't stand him as a portrayal. They, He's, you know, he's very, you know, he's got his great singing voice. He's so talented and everything, uh, but they gave him training wheels on his wheelchair and push handles and made him dress nerdy and dorky. Boston Legal, and there was a guy with Aspergers on there, and he always held his hands on his on his lap, uh, and he talked to people in a weird way, and he'd run around and, and be quirky, uh, and to that extent, it's not necessarily realistic 
uh, it, well, in my perspective. What do you do for exercise? Do you go to the gym? No, no, I don't, do you? I do actually, I have a specialised trainer who specialises in disability training. What does a guide dog actually do? With her, I can go into a strange building and ask Nina to find the lift or find the counter or find the steps. She gives me confidence with what I do. I don't think I'd be here at this university teaching and doing what I do unless she was on board. So are your other senses heightened? Perhaps. I, I do a lot of um, seeing with my eyes. I'm trying to always look at the face. Yep. I don't, I, I can hear things at the side of me and at the back of me, but I like to look at the face. Dangerous or lazy, but I think that's not true. So if someone treats me a way that I don't like because I've told them about my mental illness, I'll not be their friend anymore or I'll just not try not to get affected. What myth do you want busted? We can still do the things we want to do. It might be harder to do them, but a lot of the things that I've always sort of wanted to do just take a bit more planning, but they can still be done. That people with disabilities are separate, you know, that they're different. They're somehow in a different category of human. Yes. We're all human, and so yeah, the idea that we're separate and different is yes. something that I'd like to yes. see ditched. Yeah. For most people, blindness is black blind, no eyesight, no nothing. But not all of us are going to have guide dogs, not all of us are going to be obviously low vision. So it, it's sort of understanding that uh, we are individuals as vision impaired people. We're not just one definition. Our jokes about disability are okay. they are when we say them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those things. I think it's funny if we say them. Not to me, not to my face. Yeah. <laughs> How do you tell if a blind parachutist is about to hit the ground? Harness on the guide dog goes slack. <laughs> What's the biggest perk of living with a disability? Cutting lines. I do it all the time. Good night's sleep. <laughs> and if you have young children who wake up frequently in the middle of the night, well, you know. <laughs> total manipulation of like, oh, excuse me, can I just get past here? And like running into people's ankles just because they're in the way and then going, and then they're the ones who apologise to me. Having a dog that you can take anywhere. <laughs> I've never done studying full time. I've always done about up to three subjects and that's going to be a real challenge. For me, it's all of the little things like, oh, watch this video to learn how to do this thing that we haven't captioned it, so, you know, enjoy that. What people should know is that acknowledge what they may or may not know. That we're people. Be nice to everyone because you never know what they're going through. I want everyone to know that we want to be included, not excluded. That's better, that's better. I'm going to change my answer, that's better, yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite hobby? Drinking wine. <laughs> and actually my eyesight improves after a glass of red. I am a huge foodie, I love food. Have you ever tried to hide your disability? When I applied for my first job, I, I told them during the interview I had a hearing loss. But thankfully, he didn't worry about it. He still gave me the job. Doesn't work now with a guide dog though. Um, I can't really pack her up and put her in my backpack. I've spent more of my time hiding my hearing impairment than I have been open about it, uh, to be honest. Or certainly hiding the extent of it. Um, so I've, I've never been shy to be like, oh yes, so I'm hearing impaired, I wear hearing aids, but you know, you don't need to change anything, we'll just proceed as normal. Um, but I didn't want to get discriminated against. Always. Um, my disability is, uh, I try the best to hide everything that I've got to be as normal as possible. Uh, yeah, me too. Just Me too. Be at everything from meeting people through to interactions at, uh, at uni, uh, through to interactions at work. Uh, and I'm constant, constantly trying to hide my disability yeah. uh, through little things and trying to improve myself to make myself more, more normal. Uh, I censor myself a lot just to make sure that I'm socially acceptable.
Is it right or wrong to ask if I can help you? Is there a best way to do so? Um, I think it's okay. I mean, don't jump all over me every second when I'm trying to do things. Um, and then is there a best way? I don't think so. Just try not to make Be it polite, too in my face, I guess. patronising. It's like, yes, yeah. do you need help? Yes, like, that's like, always fun when you get like, that one. Hey, can I give you a hand? Like, yeah. It's, you know, just normal, polite yeah. human interaction. Yeah. Don't be rude about it. Don't be in my face. That's kind of all. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I think there's always, um, it's always right to help. Um, but I think the key bit there is not assuming, asking. There's nothing wrong with being like, oh, hey, so I know you've got a hearing impairment. Is there anything you need from me? Is there anything I can do? Like, I get that sometimes. And I'm like, oh, that's lovely. But if it's, oh, you're hearing impaired, I'll help you. That's not actually helpful, so. Yes. I would say if uh, the person noticed someone that's agitated, um, that they're looking like they're anxious and they're agitated, then I would ask, uh, it would be nice if, the, if someone took it upon themselves to come over and say, how are you doing, are you okay? Have you met any others on campus living with disabilities? How? Well, just now with Gordon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've met friends with, in social work and I've told them about my mental illness because I had uh, some problems, so some troubles recently. And they were really supportive as well as some of them opening up about um, them experiencing depression or, or anxiety or, um, yeah, or other mental illnesses. Well, I have um, because I've been really involved in the university's disability at work network. So I've met a lot of staff through that that have various disabilities. But something I want to make really clear is that literally everybody, no matter who you are, has met somebody or multiple people with a disability because a lot of disabilities are invisible, right? And so the answer to this question for everyone is yes. <laughs> that we all have disabilities, so we're all equal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inclusion. Uh, so instead of uh, not including some people because uh, they behave differently, uh, you include them in everything that you can, that you do. Uh, so the social stigma associated with uh, uh, not, be, not necessarily snobbishness, but uh, it, it would be nice if everyone, uh, it would be a utopia if every university student got along with each other. I guess for me, it would be a university that's focused on accessibility as the norm. You know, not having to have special rooms that are, you know, that, that are accessible or not having to make an extra effort to get something captioned or not having to make an extra, like a university where accessibility is really built in. I think Sydney Uni is pretty good. Ideal, I guess, um, lifts everywhere, maybe a few more bathrooms. Or, Parking spaces. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's this, I think it's probably more like a cultural thing really in the sense that ideal would just mean that there's there's never any question about the fact that students with disabilities are totally integrated mm. into the culture. Um, the university actually has a disability action plan, yes. um, which has been so successful that they're actually um, exporting it to other universities mm. in Australia and overseas. I'm Pia, I study social work and uh, philosophy in the Bachelor of Arts. My name's Gordon, I'm a student at uh, University of Sydney. I'm Shala Daniels Mays, I started at Sydney University in January this year as a lecturer and researcher in Aboriginal education. I'm Andrew, I'm a student here at the University of Sydney. I do the International and Global Studies degree and I'm also a staff member and work for the Faculty of Engineering as an Industry Placements Officer. Hi, uh, my name is Laura, I am a student. I am majoring in neuroscience uh, under the science faculty. My name is Sir Jane Thompson, um, I'm a trainer here at the University of Sydney in um, student administration. My name is Jenny Brand Miller and I'm a professor of human nutrition at the University of Sydney. Mm -hmm.